Hi, I'm Allie from Infragistics, and I'm here to show you how to quickly create a data bound data grid in WPF without writing a single line of code. So let's get started. Let's get started by creating a new WPF project. Next, I'm going to add a new data source to my application. In this example, we'll create the new data source from a database. We're going to be using data set, and we'll need to create a new connection to the database. In this case, we're going to be using an instance of the AdventureWorks database. As we hit next, a prompt will appear, asking if we want to copy the database file to the project. You'll select yes. You also want to save this connection string. Next, you want to name the data set and select the tables you want to include. In this case, there's only one table called employee. Click on the employee table on the data set, and we'll see a drop down menu appear. From that menu, we'll select XAM Data Grid. If this option doesn't appear for you, simply click the Customize button and select the XAM Data Grid from your options. Once you have the XAM Data Grid selected, you'll want to click and drag the data set table over to the design surface. Next, we'll right-click the XAM data grid and reset the layout so it fills the entire view. Now, if we run the application as is, you can see we have a fully functional data-bound XAM data grid control. Let's go ahead and start customizing in the XAM data grid to meet our application needs more closely. First, what we'll do is prevent the columns from auto-generating. To accomplish this, we're going to go into our settings, Field Layout Settings, Appearance, and Deselect Auto-Generate Fields. Now that we're not auto-generating columns, we need to start defining the columns we want to display in the XAM data grid. First, we'll create a field layout. Once we have our field layout, we'll begin adding fields to it. First, we'll add a field for the first name, and then some more for last name, title, department name, and we'll end with the hire date. Now, if we run the application, we'll see that only the fields we have defined are being displayed in the XAM data grid. You'll also notice that when editing a value, our XAM data grid automatically determines a value's data type and opens the correct editor. Next, let's add filter capabilities to the XAM data grid. We'll do this by opening the field settings, but this time we'll click filtering and then select Allow Record Filtering. Immediately, you'll notice that a new filter row has been enabled in the XAM data grid. Let's run the application. As you can see, we have very powerful filtering mechanisms. You can change the operand, such as Start With, Contains, Does Not Contain, if the operands that are provided don't meet your needs, you can build a more custom filtering algorithm. Next, let's draw our attention to the group by area, just above the XAM data grid column headers. You can simply drag a column into the group by area to group by that column. In addition to the functional capabilities, you can also change the look or feel of the XAM data grid. It's easily done just by changing the theme. For now, let's check out a touch-friendly, modern theme that is referred to as Metro. You'll simply change the theme property to the Metro theme, run the application, and the XAM data grid has the Metro theme applied
Finally, let's take a look at column sorting, which is easily accessed by a single mouse click on the column header. You can even sort on multiple columns by holding the control button. We can define which columns are sorted by default by editing the sorted fields collection in the field layout. Add a sorted field. You'll identify the field to sort. So for now, let's use last name. And let's go ahead and sort descending. As you can see, our ZAM data grid is now sorted by last name in descending order by default. In this video, we created a new fully data-bound ZAM data grid control with filtering, sorting, and grouping enabled, as well as defined custom columns. We also defined the columns ZAM data grid should use. We've done all of this without writing a single line of code and in only a few minutes, so that's what's in development.